In this video, we will learn how to animate this Apple-like class UI in After Effects. So, what's up guys, my name is Suman and you are watching Purple Pie Studio. So, without any further delay, let's get started with the step number one of this animation process, animating the UI elements. Alright, so we are in After Effects and here are the shape layers. So let's turn off the visibility of the circle layers for now and let's start with animating the rectangle shape. So let's open the position property and add a keyframe on the X position and also add a keyframe on the scale property. So first we will animate the tap of the on the button. So for that let's add an anticipation first for the tap. So Let's jump on to next 5 frame and add a keyframe on the scale property and I would like to increase the scale to about 120%. Also let's add a keyframe on the position property as well. From here let's jump on to next 12 frames and let's scale it down to about 92%. And then again let's add a keyframe on the X position property. Okay, let's turn on the guide of the composition window. So at this particular position, I would like to move the button and place it exactly at the center of the composition. Now let's move the playhead on the next keyframe. From here, I would like to add some overshoot. So let's add with. So now let's jump on to next around eight frame and I would like to increase the scale to about 106%. Let's jump on to next 6 frame and let's decrease it to 98%. Now again, let's jump on to next 4 frame and just give it 100% or maybe a slight more overshoot here to about 100.5. And again, let's jump on to next 4 frames and give it 100%. Now let's easy is the keyframe. Also let's delete the very first position keyframe and let's select this uh, scale keyframe and go to the graph editor and let's adjust the Bezier handles a bit. Same with the position keyframe as well. All right, so this is how it looks now. So if you want to make it a complete loop animation it gets back to its original position again you can simply repeat this animation all over again but for now i will keep it as it is so let's move on with the circle shape layers so let's open the position property again and let's add keyframe here on the x position property open the scale property and add keyframes and also turn on the visibility of the layers so now let's move on to the next key pose and add keyframes. At the start, I would like to decrease the scale of the circle frames to 80% and go to the align tab and just align it horizontally at the center and also let's move it exactly at the center. Now let's jump on to the next key pose and at this point, I would like to increase the scale to about 112%. So now we will just uh, move on with adding some overshoot for the animation. So here let's decrease the scale to 96. On the next key pose, let's increase it to 101. On the next one, let's decrease it to 99.8. And then again, get it back to 100%. Easy is the keyframe. And here we can simply copy the motion graph using uh, is copy and copy it. And here we can select the keyframes of the scale property, paste it, do the same for the position property as well. We are simply copying the is and pasting it on the pair of keyframes. All right, so now this is how it looks like. Okay, now let's add a liquid effect on this animation. So let's select the rectangle shape and let's start with adding a turbulent displacement effect. Change the displacement to bulge. Now let's increase the size to 150 and let's animate the amount. So let's add a keyframe. Let's start with 0% or 0 and then let's uh, increase it to 12. 
then uh, go to the next key pose and let's uh, give it minus 12 now move on to the next key pose and give it 8 move on to the next key pose and let's give it minus uh, 4 next one let's give it 2 and or let's give it 1 actually and next one let's get back to 0 so simply copy the motion graph editor from the scale keyframe here and paste it on this amount keyframe let's check it now you can see a little bit of distortion effect here but we will also enhance this liquid effect by adding more effects so for now just select the rectangle shape just copy the turbulent displace effect and paste it on the circle shape layers as well. Alright, so now let's add an adjustment layer here. And do one more thing. Let's uh, turn off the visibility of the gradient background here. Now apply Gaussian blur. And then increase the blurness to 30. Again, let's apply matte choker. Let's uh, decrease the choke one to about 40. And also let's decrease the gray level softness one to about 5%. And let's check out the animation. Now you can see that liquid effect for the buttons. Okay, one more thing. Uh, These settings may differ depending on what is the composition size or the resolution of your composition you are working on so you may have to adjust the settings a little bit but the techniques will be exactly same okay now let's apply the glass effect okay before moving on let's uh, first offset this circle shape layers by two keyframes or by two frames to add some overlap and now just pre-comp all the layers together and name it button 1. Okay, uh, let's turn on the visibility of the background layers and let's apply transform on the button composition. And let's increase the scale to about 112. And also turn on the rasterize and uh, convert this layer into an adjustment layer. Next, apply brightness and contrast and increase the brightness to about 80% and contrast to about 30. Now duplicate this button composition once again and let's rename it displacement. Let's uh, delete all these effects from the displacement composition. Also we don't need this layer as an adjustment layer so let's turn it off. Now let's apply a layer style inner glow. Here let's uh, change the color to black Let's change the blending mode to normal and now let's increase the size. So let's give it about 200 or let's decrease it a little bit. Also let's increase the range. Okay, now let's just turn off the displacement and let's get back to the button layer and uh, apply displacement map. From here let's select the layer as displacement now let's uh, decrease the max horizontal displacement to about minus 20 and let's increase the max vertical displacement displacement by 9 so this gives a refraction effect over here next i would also apply another effect cc glass under surface Let's increase the height to about 100. Okay, now let's apply CC glass. Under surface, let's increase the height to about 100%. Alright. And one more thing, uh, for the displacement composition, let's turn on the continuous rasterize. So this is again going to give that bulge effect as well. Alright, now let's duplicate the button layer one more time and place it above and turn this off 
just delete all the effects from this layer apply fill effect and change it to black then add a layer style bevel and emboss go to the settings let's increase the softness let's give it around 16 also let's decrease the shadow opacity to about 60 percent and let's change the blending mode to screen now you can see it's starting to add some class ui effect okay let's uh, rename this layer to 3d edge and let's duplicate this layer one more time and now let's rename it to edge glow and then delete the layer styles from this layer and also let's just turn off the blending mode for now and let's apply cc light swipe let's uh, move this point to exactly at the center and let's uh, increase the width to about 250 let's also decrease the swipe intensity to 4 and also slightly increase the edge thickness let's uh, duplicate this effect one more time and just rotate the direction to about 180 degree and you can even animate the light swipe effect from here just uh, animating the direction you can easily animate the edge glow as well like the way you can see over here it was animated in the ui effect in apple class ui all right finally let's apply glow let's decrease the threshold to 45 and increase the radius to 40 and also let's slightly increase the intensity all right now let's again uh, change the blending mode to screen okay now let's uh, add an adjustment layer rename it noise and apply noise let's increase it to four percent and let's duplicate this button layer and just turn off all this and uh, use that button layer as an alpha mat okay now it's time to add some drop shadow so let's duplicate this composition one more time and uh, let's rename it shadow and delete all these effects and then apply inner glow then uh, change the color to black and the blending mode to normal let's increase the size to about 110 also let's uh, increase the range a little bit and then apply gaussian blur and increase the blurness to about 30 percent and uh, now let's place it below the button layer let's change the blending mode to multiply also let's uh, decrease the opacity to about uh, 40 percent and just move it or slightly offset it from the button layer that's it and here it gives a nice uh, shadow for the glass and this is how it turns out and if you guys are wondering how i have animated this text on the button you can simply just uh, add the text and the shape layers on top of the button and uh, then parent it with its uh, shape layers and then apply gaussian blur and animate the blurness and the opacity of the layer that's it all right so that was all for this video and i will see you in the next one until then goodbye